All right, makeup geeks, it is time for my go-to fall makeup. It's been a little while since I did a tutorial, and you guys have been requesting them. So I'm going to try to do some more tutorials for you. But I had a request from one of you to do a fall look that wasn't the traditional colors where it's like green, um, browns, oranges. I wanted something that still had a fall vibe to it but with a little twist of it. So I did purple and plum. So the key uh, shadow to this look is Curtain Call, which is a beautiful foiled plum shadow. And then I did a nice rosy lip with it. So this is my version of glam fall makeup. And get ready with me because I do lots of chit-chatting and coffee drinking in this video, just so you know. So be prepared, get a snack, and let's do this look. Okay, to start off my go-to fall look, you guys, obviously I'm going to pin my hair back because you guys always complain about my hair is in the way. I get it. I get it. Okay. I'm going to start off by putting a little bit of oil on my skin um, just because my skin's really dry. But if you're oily, you can skip this step. What I'm going to do is just take some sort of rounded buffer brush, put a little bit of oil on the back of your hand. Don't put it directly in the brush because you'll waste a lot of product. And my forehead is most dry, so I just buff it in to the forehead and I get up here under my brows, under my eyes, just so I'm really hydrated. But again, if you're oily, just skip this step. Okay, now next step is to cover my eye bags, my super intense, very high-end eye bags that go with me everywhere. Where is my concealer? Hold on real quick, guys. Oh, there it is. Okay. You can take any sort of orange-based concealer like this. Make sure it's a couple shades um, more saturated than your skin tone, if that makes sense. If it's too light, it's going to actually... Um, accentuate the blueness under the eyes. So as you can tell, this is quite a bit darker than my skin, a little bit more pigmented. But the whole goal is, it's gonna look crazy at first, is just to counteract the blueness under the eyes. And then from there, now you can do your foundation. So you guys know my favorite foundation right now is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric. It's this one right here. I did a little spray tanning last night, so I'm a little bit darker than usual, so I'm wearing number 5.5. .5. Normally I'm a 4, but the shade range of this is amazing. So what I do is I put a few pumps on the back of my hand, and then I take that buffer brush and pick up some of it. And this is such a highly pigmented foundation that a little goes a long way. So even though it's an expensive foundation, it works so well. So I just buff it in all over my face. So I was gonna tell you guys too, you wanna put a little bit down your um, neck and your chest. I don't know if it's just from me getting older, but I feel like my chest is a little freckly now. I'm like, what the hell? Why do I have freckles down here? I didn't used to have to put foundation down. I used to just stop at my neck but you definitely have to put foundation down your neck a little bit so you don't get that orange line. Have you ever seen that where you have, you could tell when people are wearing foundation because their face is like two shades different than their neck and chest. So you definitely have to always blend it. And I know this is a crazy tip, but you need to put just a little bit on your ears, especially this side because I'm doing the very fancy like one-sided hair. So I can't have my ear be white and then the rest of my face be a different color. So I got to put a little bit on there, get in the hairline a little bit, you know, got to do what you got to do. And then I'm gonna put a little bit on my chest too to hide my, hide my little freckles, my little sun damage, that, cause I went in the sun like I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> but do you see how it evens it out? And this foundation, cause it's, um, uh, it dries down really, really well. I haven't gotten any staining on my clothes. I even wear white shirts and this stuff does not go anywhere. I'm telling you, it is the best foundation I've ever used in my entire life. It's incredible. There we go. Okay, now this part's optional too. I like to highlight under my eyes um, in here a little bit. So what I do is I take a foundation that's a couple shades lighter. So that was, um, actually that was number four. Hold on, this one, Urban Decay, okay. So I'm gonna take a matte finish foundation because in the center of your skin, you get a little bit more oily. So I like to do a very matte finish. I like the Urban Decay All Nighter. And then the other one that I like, you guys, is the Locket one by Kat Von D. They're both very, very matte. So it helps me from getting oily throughout the day. So what I do is I pump a little bit on the side of my hand. And you guys notice how I'm using the side of my hand as a palette. I like doing that 
instead of putting it directly on my face, it's a little bit cleaner so I don't have to touch the bottle. But what I'm gonna do is take a beauty blender that's just slightly damp and then I pick up a little bit of this foundation. You can use foundation or concealer. I like using foundation because I change shades so much anyways because I spran. Sometimes I don't spran. Sometimes I get some sun. Sometimes I'm pasty. So I like to have a few different shades of foundation on hand anyways. But do you see how this is covering up my redness and pores in here? It just gives me a little extra coverage. But what it does is it brightens up under here just a little bit and then it mattifies it because it's a different formula. It's a very matte one. Put a little on the forehead, the chin, and just down the top of the nose, just where you get oily. All right, so now that you got your foundation on, you can do a little bit of powder. If you have dry skin, don't put much powder on. I'm gonna say this again. You know I'm not messing around when I grab my coffee. If you have dry skin, don't put a lot of powder on because you're gonna start looking cakey. Only put powder on if you get a little bit oily. I'm gonna show you where to put your powder, okay. I'm using my Maybelline Dream Wonder Foundation. You can get it at any drugstore for $5. <laughs> I'm gonna take the back of that beauty blender that doesn't have the foundation on it. I pick up a little bit of the powder. I like using it with a damp beauty blender because it makes the powder break down a little bit so it's not so dry and cakey. Use the least amount of powder possible. And for me, I only put it on the center of my face. So I put it right here under the eyes to set it. Put a little on my eyelids, do this side. And then with what's left, then I start tapping at the outer part of my face just so there's just enough powder to where I can do my bronzer and stuff without it sticking to the foundation. So that's the amount of powder I did. Just two little dabs, good to go. Okay, now I'm gonna do my bronzer. Where did my bronzer go? There it is, okay. So I'm gonna use the Makeup Geek one. Let me wipe it off because it's all dirty because I used it a lot. <laughs> Can you see how dented it is? That's how I, much I use it. So I'm going to take my angled stippling brush like this one. This is the color Tawny. This is the medium skin one. If you have fair skin, use the, the lighter one. And then there's one for deep skin too. So there's three shades for everyone. So I'm gonna use Tawny. And then what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit here under the cheekbone. Let me show you guys on the other side so you can see. Okay, so right here, and you can add layers on. What I love about this bronzer is it has 1% pearl in there, so it gives you just a very natural sheen to the skin. It's not super matte, but it's definitely not glittery at all. It's just, it looks like skin. So that's why I like it, because it blends in really well. And then what I do is I'll come up on the forehead, like in my hairline a bit, because my hair is so dark and my skin's so light that I like kind of doing a transition from the hairline. Does that make sense? <laughs> and it contours my face just a little bit more and it adds dimension back in. Put a little, you guys know I always got to get rid of my chin fluff, which is getting more accentuated with age, which is just so fun. <laughs> like double chin is barking. It's fine. We're going to chisel that shiznit out. So do that. Okay, now do you see how there's still a natural sheen to the skin because I didn't put so much powder on? Can you see how there's still some reflection in there? That's what you want. Okay, if you want to wear a little blush, you can. If you don't wanna wear blush, that's fine. The one I really like that I use a ton is Main Squeeze and it's kind of a warm pink tone. Um, so what I do is I take the same brush and I'll just put a little bit on the apples of the cheeks just a teeny bit because um, I don't want too much color because my eyes are going to be a little bit dramatic today. You can take your beauty blender and kind of blend it out a bit. And then what I'm going to do, there's a trick I'm going to show you guys. So take any sort of fluffy brush or whatever your favorite highlighter brush is. I'm going to take the In The Nude palette because I'm going to use this a lot. Do you guys see how dented it is, especially this color? I use this palette, no lie every single day. It's in my travel kit. It's I have like three copies of that. Three copies. Three sets. <laughs> three sets of them. It's a multi-purpose palette. So I'm going to take this brush. We're going to go in with the top color here. This is in the spotlight. You can use it as a highlighter so when you're traveling you don't have to bring a separate highlighter. You can just use a shadow. And this is intense shine. So if you really want that kind of shine, can you see it? Let's do it on this camera. Can you guys see that shine? 
Yes, yes. If it's too much, if you feel like it's too shiny for everyday wear, you can always go over it with a beauty blender and pat it out. But you know I like to shine like a diamond. <laughs> All right. Now what I do, the last step, actually, let's do eyes first. Um, take a kind of dome shaped brush like this these are brushes that are going to come out um next year for us so they're test samples so i'm sorry i'm showing a sneaky peek that i should have but what i do is i take this top color the name of that one is so pale it's my go-to for under eyes if you have fair to medium skin it's a good eye brightener so what i do is i set my foundation a little bit with it and i brighten under the eyes right here and that gives me a base to blend my eyeshadow. So I'm not gonna use any eye primer at all. I think if you just have a little foundation and a base powder color, your um, eyeshadow will blend really well. Okay, let's do eyebrows. So I'm gonna use the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I use number three and two. Three is the darker one. And I use this underneath the brows to kind of define it. So I'm just gonna take, let me take a mirror because I can't see where she's in it these days. Hold on, sleeves are ready. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> like, this is the part I'm not messing around. Hold on, I need another sip of coffee. <laughs> this is where we're hitting it down. Okay, take your brow pencil and you're just gonna define underneath a little bit. You guys see that? And create the shape that you want. I just want it to be very defined underneath. Take a little bit more of that pencil and I like to define the outer part of the brow just halfway and I just kind of fill it in and I'll show you why I switch colors in a second let me do this side so start at the outer part of the brow like halfway just kind of fill it in my brows are so thin you guys so I have to really fill them in then i'm going to switch to a lighter color because you want the inner part of your brow to be lighter the outer part to be darker so i always use two different brow pencils i never use the same color hold on my hair is getting my dang nerves okay number two and then we fill in the rest of it let's do this side so i just do kind of feathery strokes like this and just fill in the top a little bit now I take a spoolie brush like this one and I just brush through the brows, especially in the inner part. I try to soften it a bit and then you could take, this is optional, some sort of concealer or base. I use the Max Paint Pot in Painterly. Do you guys remember my old videos from old school, like 2010? I used to use Painterly Paint Pot all the time. Bringing back some retro moments here. I hope you guys appreciate that. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is carve out under the brow a bit just to define the line. Because you want it to be very defined on the bottom, but not as much on the top. The top can be nice and feathery, especially now the trend is those feather brows. I can't get it right because my brows are just effed up to begin with. So I make it work for what I can. So just define that out. You take what's left and I just kind of comb it through the inner part of the brow just to lighten them a little bit. Now the best part is the eyes. You guys know that it's my favorite. This is my go-to look for evenings or weekends or I wear it to business meetings too, but that's me. I'm a honey badger. I wear whatever I want to business meetings, but if this is too much for you guys, just use it for a date night. Um, but the color palette I'm using looks something like this. I'm going to do a a different twist on fall shadows because when everyone does fall makeup tutorials it's like oh let's do green and orange and burgundy it's like okay we've done that already i want to do purples and plums so it's still very fall ish but a little bit different so the colors i have this is curtain call taboo tuscan sun and curfew and i'm going to add a little bit of pop with the sugar pill poison which is a really bright purple i'll show you how it turns out it's beautiful okay so what i'm going to do is take a brush like this. this is the it cosmetics chic eyeshadow brush like that one pick up some of the bright purple the poison plum and we're just going to start feathering this on the outer part of the eye sugar milk pill makes some amazing bright shadows amy does a really good job hi amy she used to be a Bay Area girl with me, and then she moved down to L.A., and then I followed her, and I came to L.A. too, so now we're, we're L.A. girls. <laughs> but she's a sweetheart, so I love supporting her company. But I'm going to blend this out on the outer part of the eye. 
just get that base coat kind of started. And the good thing is about this look is you can do it as bright as you want. Just keep adding layers until you get the saturation that you want. Okay, so that's kind of the base coat that you will have. Now for the crease, you can take Tuscan Sun, which is a pinky color right here, same brush. And we're just gonna buff this slightly above it just to warm it up a bit. If you don't want that pink color, you can do a kind of nude color, like in the nude palette, it's the one right here, which is tan lines. It's a really nice warm brown. If you wanna use that instead, you can. And if you have deeper skin for my beautiful chocolate girls, use Cocoa Bear as your transition color. It's a really good transition slash crease color for deeper skin. Okay, now I'm gonna take the In The Nude palette. I use this every day, you guys. That's why it's so dented in right here. I'm gonna take the middle one right here, which is buffed. This is my go-to transition color above the crease. And I just start buffing it out here. Sorry, I applied too much there. And then I go in with the, uh, I can't remember the names of these because I just use it every day. It's so pale. Right here under the brow. And what I do is I come in on the inner corner just to brighten it. And this is to soften everything out. So it's a nice smooth transition from the purple out. Okay. Now we can do the fun part, which is the curtain call. It's the most beautiful burgundy. I'm going to make it a little bit more intense by putting taboo on the outer corner. This part you can skip if you don't want it to be too dramatic. Um, what I'm going to do is take a brush like this. This is the It Cosmetics. It's It Cosmetics makes great brushes. The Airbrush Precision Smudger. I'll list it in the link below so you guys can check that out. So go in with taboo, this deep purple and just put a bit on the outer part of the eye, just for depth and dimension, honestly. Take a little bit more of that and you could, um, do you guys hear the birds chirping? It's a beautiful, beautiful day in California. <laughs> I have the door open because I'm like, I need fresh air. <laughs> and ladies running around in the backyard. I'm sitting here trying to focus on filming and I see lady like crossing back here. I'll show you guys at the end of the video. She'll say hi. I'm going to do a little bit of taboo under here. And darken that up. Same thing on this side. Take that same brush. I'm going to go in with Tuscan Sun and just blend under the lower lash line so it's not too harsh. The goal with blending under the lower lash line is to always have two colors, one that's darker and one that's a little lighter. And it doesn't even matter what the colors are as long as it's darker and medium. That bird is really talking today, isn't it? Hope you guys like the special effects I'm giving you on the video today. <laughs> Complete with bird chirping sounds and all sorts of peaceful noises. <laughs> I'm going to touch up under the eyes a little bit with one more round. Just a very light round of this so pale color. Just to smooth it up and clean up everything. Okay, now comes the fun part. If you guys think this is enough and you don't want it to be dramatic, you can just apply liquid liner or some sort of liner, put your mascara on, and it's a beautiful, more subtle look. But you know I like some glam, so I'm going to go in with a flat brush. This is the Makeup Geek Foiled Eyeshadow Brush. It's really good for our foiled shadows. I'm going to go in with Curtain Call, which is a beautiful, shimmery, burgundy color. Let me swatch it so you guys can see. Do you see that right there? The burgundy, it looks beautiful. So this is what's gonna give us that really glam fall look. So I'm gonna pat this on the eyes. Do you see the combination of the plum with the purple? It still looks very fall, but it's not like your usual fall. Take your uh, crease brush here with a little bit more Tuscan Sun or your buffed from the In The Nude palette and you can kind of blend the crease out again. Just like that. 
Okay, so now for the liner, you guys. I already did it because I accidentally shut off my sound card. So I'm going to show you what I did so that way you guys can understand what happened there. <laughs> my bad. No, I wasn't cheating. I didn't turn the camera off and do stuff because I can't do liquid liner. But this is no joke when you do liquid liner. What I did is I took the Tarte uh, Precision Longwear Liner. And um, I stay close to the lash line as much as possible. And it's up to you guys if you want it to be dramatic and do a super full on wing. I want the focus to be on the cranberry foiled shadow in the center because I think it's very beautiful. So I don't want to overpower it with too much liner, but I do want to thicken the lash line. So I take this one. Another favorite that I like is the Revlon Color Stay one. It is very liquidy though, so make sure you wipe off the edges of it because that stuff does not play. And you do not want to F around with liquid liner. It will destroy your whole look. <laughs> so be careful when you get to this step. That's why I'm like, sip of coffee. And I got my sleeves up. I don't mess around with the liquid liner. <laughs> so you're just honestly going to stay close to the lash line. And then I just kind of wing it up very, very slightly. Not much. But it's up to you how far out you want the wing. Okay. Now we can do the mascara. You know my go-to ride or die mascara is the L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black. It's just amazing mascara. It doesn't flake. It doesn't budge. It's incredible. And it's $6. Actually, I think it's $8 now. It used to be $6. But still, some bomb mascara. When you guys do the lower mascara... You gotta do the creepers look. You gotta like look down and then be like, yeah. Or like the teacher when they're looking at you when you're in your trouble, they put your glasses down, they like that. That's how you do lower mascara. Now for the lips, I'm going to keep it easy with a lip liner and lipstick. I'm loving the NARS lip liners right now. This is the one in Larens. L Lerons? I don't know. I'm going to list it below because I cannot spell things that aren't in English, apparently. I did not do well in language class, you guys. Surprise. So there's the lip liner, and then I'm using the Makeup Geek Lipstick in Shy. It's a beautiful creamy formula, and it's a rosy color. Do you see the combination of the two? So it's very wearable for every day. It still has that fall vibe, but it's not like vampy, super dark, where you feel like you have to touch it up all day. It's just a great everyday wearable shade, even if you don't do eyes this dramatic. So I'm gonna take the NARS lip liner first and just line the lips. Just like that. And then just take your shy lipstick do you see how it's a beautiful, creamy, rosy color? I said that kind of perverted. I was like, it's so creamy. <laughs> this is what happens, you guys, when I drink too much coffee. Crazy Marlena comes out to play. <laughs> but you guys know me by now I'm crazy. That's why you're here. You all crazy, too. <laughs> so that is the very fallish type glam video. That's my go-to look for now. I like it. Purples and plums and a nice rosy lip. So there you go. I hope you guys had fun with this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as usual, I will link to all the products that I put below. So you got to check that out after you hit the subscribe button. All right. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Somebody was working hard today. Someone was thirsty after playing outside for a long time chasing lizards. <laughs> And butterflies. <laughs> and butterflies. Pretty much anything that's outside. I'm gonna get you. Oh, <laughs> baby. baby.